Are you climbing your family tree using the parish records on Find My Past? If not, then I recommend that you do. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, and I love to help you find online resources to help you climb your family tree. And one of those resources are from my friends over at Find My Path, and they have a lot of great resources in their parish collection. So let me show you how I began to research English Paris records using Find My Path. So the first step that I was taught was that you should search for baptisms first. The baptisms have the most identifying pieces of information in order to build your family tree. Uh, next would be marriage records and then finally burial records and you're going to see why in a second. But start with the baptism records for the relative that you're searching for. So I'm going to borrow uh, an English relative simply because I don't have any close English relatives in order to um, search in parish records. And as many, many of you know, I'm a really big fan of the Poldark series. I thought the recent BBC um, five-part series was really great. And the villain, George Warleggan, was played by Jack Barthy. Now, if I search for Poldark or Warleggan or Karn, none of those names show up. But Barthy does, so we're going to dive in there. So we're going to go over to Find My Past. And in order to get to this form, you need to click on Search, and then All Categories, and then you'll be here. Go ahead and highlight parish baptism records as a way to filter even further and then type in your parameters. So I'm going to use John Farthing and I'm just going to pick the year 1827 and see what comes up. So pulled art guy was just to give me a name to get started. I don't actually know if this is his relative, but wouldn't it be fun if it was? And when we get to the next page, the research results will be on the side and you can always add variations of the surnames. You can plus or minus the birth year, but notice down at the bottom, I added the location of Beaufort. That was, um, could do it on the first form, but I did it on the second. And then I get these results. There were three, yay me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click through to them and then I get a baptism record in this parish book. Let's go ahead and see some of the things that you may discover on your parish records. So the first thing you might notice are dates. Now, not every collection has both dates, but in the left column in the yellow, that was actually the birth date that they recorded. And then the blue box, the teal box, was the date of the baptism. Pay particular attention when these dates are more spread out or closer together. That can give you a lot of clues about the status of the birth and the joining of the church and so on and so forth. So the next thing you're going to see, or you're going to see the name of the child, John, son of Thomas and Mary Farthing. They don't have the female surname very often in some of the records that I've looked at. If you found that to be different, a different case, let us know the locations where they added the female surname. The next thing you're going to find, and this is particularly useful in separating people out, and that is the abode and the uh, trade of the father. And so there's Beeford, and that's the occupation of farmer. So I'm going to keep looking for that relative in order to keep him separated from somebody else. You'll also be able to see who performed that ceremony. It's kind of nice to add to historical context. Now, there's so much that you can find in each documentation. And one of the things I really like is you have the aristocrats and the non-aristocrats showing up in the same records. And if you've re read historical fiction like Pole Dark or some of my Regency romance novels that are my um, guilty pleasure, you know that they try to keep themselves separate in real life. But in these documents, they're all on the same page. So here is the um, baptism for George Franville Sutherland. And what I really like is that the dad's occupation is listed Esquire Commons called the Marquis of Stafford. So you will be able to trace your relatives based on that. And if you come across something like this, then you know you have bumped into the aristocracy and good for you. So there's some other things that you may discover in these records, but it all depends on the person keeping the, the collection. On this entry, 
they also added the date that they died. So the child was born on the 4th and died on the 5th. So that's really nice and very handy so you know not to keep looking for marriage records and other records. And it's also pretty sad because losing a child so quickly after birth is always pretty tragic. The other thing, this was one I hadn't expected, and that is when you have John, son of John and Susanna Major, and then you have Marianne, daughter. They have the same birth date and same baptism date, and they went ahead and confirmed that they were twins. So I really have to praise this um, rec parish reg register creator for doing that. So be sure to look for the extra notes that you may discover in these records. Now, the more modern the baptism, the more pre-printed form and organized the information will be. The further back in time you go, the more disorganized the records are going to be. Um, and then the further back in time you go from there, you're going to bump into Latin. So make sure you learn your Latin <laughs> if you're going to be searching for your English relatives. Um, this one is from 1700. <laughs> so the second step is to begin looking for siblings in the same record collection. Once you find your ancestor in baptism, look for the family because that's going to help you later when you're trying to build that family. So to, the way to do that is instead of putting the name in the field like I showed you for John and then limit to 1827, I'm going to keep the year 1827 and maybe do a five-year or ten-year range. And I'm going to keep a location because I want this to be targeted. So I used Beeford. And then I took the names that were on um, John's records. So Thomas Farthing and the mother Mary. When I did that, I came up with a, a number of search results. There were only five. That's kind of nice. Um, perhaps you're going to have even more and you're going to have to painstakingly go through each name. But when I had those five, one of the things I really like about Find My Fast is that I can click on this year drop down arrow um, or the title of the year, and it will sort things chronologically. So um, oldest to youngest, youngest to oldest. And now I can kind of see that family structure. So we have 27, 28, 29, 31. Those are really close together. The 1850, that's gonna be questionable, right? That's a really big gap. It's not implausible. There could be a historical explanation. There could be kids missing, but I'm definitely gonna be looking at these kids. I'll go, the, slightly older than my key answer Sir John and slightly younger and then just keep expanding that fan out. So here we did find um, a sibling, Elizabeth, daughter of Thomas and Mary Farthing and I know this is the correct family because he's in, B they're in Beeford and his occupation is farmer and it just so happens that we have the same person performing that baptism. So after you've exhausted baptismal records, now it's time to go search for the marriage record. Now in this case, I'm actually going to look for um, Thomas Farthing, and I'm trying to find the uh, marriage to Mary. I'm going to put it at 1825. I did rule out that that other Robert might not have been Tom and Mary's son. So I'm going to use the um, 1825, and when I use the record... Um, Location is Beeford. I couldn't find any results. So then I went to the next largest geopolitical designation, and that's why I put in Yorkshire. When I put that in, I got a number of possibilities. So I started processing them. I'm trying to get them as close as possible to Beeford, and look, there's Beeford, Yorkshire, East Reading, England. So that looked like what I wanted to explore. When I did, I saw Thomas Fourth Farthing, marriage, 1826. That Robert from 1815 could be this son. He would be illegitimate if it was with the wife Mary. However, if it's Thomas, then maybe he had a previous wife to marry. But in any case, the marriage is taking place in Beeford to a Mary Wardell uh, Clark. And the way they structured it, that Wardell is supposed to be a middle name rather than two surnames. So I went ahead and looked at the record and sure enough, I have a marriage license um, taking place on the 5th of October, 1826. And the same person that baptized their children is performing the marriage. Now, there are duplicate entries for 
the marriage on Find My Past. And what I found is sometimes one is easier to read than the other. So be sure you check out all of them, even if you feel like it's talking about the same one. So from there, I went ahead and looked for just all marriages and I went ahead and used a different year, 1859, looking for farthings. And now I have quite a few farthings that are getting married. Um, I think this might, the one I'm finding is for John's sister. What we see is Margaret marrying Thomas Reynolds and we have the residence, so North Fordingham, I believe that's what it says, help me. <laughs> I'm not familiar completely with the geography, but we'll talk about that in a second. But she's from Beeford, her father is Thomas, and the occupation is father. So that leads me to believe that this is actually the um, family that I was looking for. This is the sister of John. We also see that who were the witnesses. Pay attention to this because there's Mary and Farthing. It's either um, another sister, it could be a mother. That can give you clues. Just are you working with the right family? After that, it's then time to search for burial records. And this became pretty challenging for me because when I looked for anything in Beeford, I couldn't find anything in Beeford. And um, when I expanded to just Yorkshire, I think I had some uh, additional success. So I limited it to just burial records. And I found an Elizabeth Farthing who was um, from Beeford Grange and where she would buried her age is four months old and that the curate is the same person from the, the previous records. It was all, it's easy if everything takes place in the exact same location that you think they should be Beeford. But as I was researching the farthings, I saw Beeford, I saw Skipsy, I saw Lisette, and then I also saw a, a Warren Percy. I could easily justify or believe that things that were this close together that they're about the same family. And in fact, I often saw that um, births and marriages were taking in place in Beeford and then deaths were taking place in Lisette. There are times when there's an a, even larger gap, but this gap is a 20, a 30 mile difference. And in 1820, it's possible. And that's when you're gonna have to use a map and you're gonna need to go and research the history and then you're gonna try to trace people's uh, locations to see if it makes sense. It's possible you have same name individuals in two different locations, and it's also possible you have the same person, they just had a migration. And 30 miles isn't that bad, but you definitely wanna check the history and look for other identifying pieces of information before you say, yes, this person is mine. Especially if you have somebody go from Cornwall to Northumberland you really need to make that case. Recognize the computer algorithms can only suggest possible records. You need to go and verify the information and sometimes you're gonna have to browse. Once you get into one record, you might have to turn pages. So sometimes you have to look for a common name in the year where you think your relative is buried, married, or born. And then once you're in that rear, you can page through forward and back to try to figure out where your relatives were and why they may have been skipped or improperly in debt. Now, Find My Past, like many other platforms, base their hints on the trees other researchers have and the records they've connected to them. Keep that in mind. Trust but verify always trust but verify. So that's a general overview of how to get into parish records over on uh, Find My Past. I hope that you can have some success finding your English ancestors and who knows you may figure out how you're related to the John Farthing I featured or you may discover that the John Farthing I featured is related to Jack Farthing who is George Rorleggins in the Pordock series. Now, if you're ready to learn more tips and tricks on how to use Find My Past, be sure to check out this playlist right there. And if you're ready for the latest video that we've released, be sure to check out this one right here. Now, only accept a hint if, a tree hint, if it's based on, wait, I don't need this. <laughs> Throw that all out. I don't know what that was for.